This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. When it's gotta be great, and it's gotta be now, it's gotta be, gotta be Domino's. Welcome back to our studios here in New York, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Mike Ditka and Joe Gibbs. And let's run down scores and highlights for you as we have them now, beginning with the game in Cincinnati and the Miami Dolphins ahead of the Bengals at the break by a field goal. 13-10, the score there. Dave Shula 0-5 as an assistant or a head coach against his dad. Dan Marino hooking up here with Randall Hill, Hill's first reception of the season. That's a 58-yard gain to the Bengal 18. It set up Pete Stojanovic for a field goal and a 3-0 Miami lead. Miami driving in the first Marino to Gary Clark, hit by Roger Jones, and Andre Collins makes the interception at the 12-yard line. The Bengals capitalize off the turnover. Jeff Blake on the play action to Carl Pickens for the TD. It was 7-3 Cincy, but here comes Dan Marino. He finds Eric Green between defenders for an 8-yard scoring strike to make it 10-7. Take a look at the quarterback battle today. Dan Marino, 219 yards and a touchdown. Jeff Blake, 70 yards and one touchdown. We talked prior to this game about emotion, Joe, and emotion has played a part so far. Well, I think it has. I think the other thing has played a part. It looks like Miami's going back to their old game plan, all Marino. They, he's got 20 attempts here, only 11 attempts rushing. That's kind of going away from what got him you know, 3-0 and undefeated. And, Mike, we talked about the Bengals in the pregame show. The Bengals are tough. They hang in. Well, and the whole key we said if they could play defense with them, they're going to be in there because Blake and his offense will score some points. They're doing a good job. All right, Mike. In uh, RFK Stadium in Washington, take a look at this score at halftime. The Redskins lead the Dallas Cowboys by a score of 20-10. to Cowboy quarterback Troy Aikman out of this game with a strained calf muscle, and the Redskins are playing inspired football. They lead it by 10 at the break. In Indianapolis, the unbeaten Rams trail the Colts 14 to 10 in this game, Joe, uh, the Rams did something they haven't done all season. They committed a turnover. Well, they are totally out of their game plan here. When you think about this, they've had five attempted rushes for six yards. So they've been rushing the football. They've been stopping the rush. They haven't stopped it here. They've had one turnover, and that led to a touchdown. So they're away from their game plan also. And you saw Marshall Falk's numbers in this game. It's his first 100-yard game this season. Eight carries for 123 yards so far. The Colts lead the Rams by four. In Atlanta, the Falcons hosting the New England Patriots and leading New England 17 to 7 as they head toward break. Injured quarterback Bledsoe replaced by Sot Zolak for the Patriots. Jeff George with a hot hand early on, 13 of 13, including this completion to Terrence Mathis, who fumbled. But J.J. Burton recovered for Atlanta. It led to a Morton Anderson field goal and a 3 0 Falcons lead. Zolak, third and four to Vincent Brisby over the middle, who goes 71 yards before being tackled at the two yard line. And three plays later, rookie Curtis Martin went over the top, a one-yard plunge, second touchdown of the season for Martin and for the Patriots, 7-3 New England. But then watch Craig Ironhead Hayward on the draw play from nine yards out for the touchdown. George to Terrence Mathis for the two-point conversion made it 14-7 in favor of the Falcons. And it is now a 17-7 score. The one thing that Jeff George is proving once again is the Patriots cannot defend against the pass. Well, that's one thing they can do, but it's a 17 to 14 score right now. I'm not giving up on those Patriots because they got a lot of heart. Bill Parcells <laughs> coach them. They'll be back. All right, Mike. In Carolina, Tampa Bay and the Panthers, 13 to 7. Bucks are leading it at halftime. In New Orleans, the Eagles and the Saints have gone to the break with the Eagles leading at 6 to 3. And one baseball score to report to you: the New York Yankees have a 4 nothing lead on the Toronto Blue Jays. A Yankee victory or a California loss to Oakland today puts the Yankees into the postseason as a wild card. When we return, we'll hear from Rod Woodson of the Steelers and check in with Will McDonough for some NFL news and notes. And we'll get to that right after this from your local station. They masterminded the most brutal crime spree on record and eluded the FBI for seven years. You can't turn up the heat on what you can't find. Based on a true story, the most massive manhunt in U.S. history. They're so close, I felt like I could reach out and grab them. 1,000 agents, one brilliant gang, one tantalizing clue. This is your worst nightmare come true. Let's go for it, everybody. Move in now. NYPD Blues' Nicholas Torturo, Adam Arkin, in the line of duty, NBC tonight. Advance Auto Parts presents part number five, the ear. Ingeniously designed to capture sound waves, the ear allows Advance Auto Parts salespeople to hear every word you say. I put coolant in the radiator, but it still overheats. The more you talk, the more they listen. Hearing your problems out is how they figure the problem out. 
Only then do they use part number nine. Sounds like the thermostat. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Attention, all military E1 and up and civil service. No money down. Getting credit is no problem, and you can get it today with absolutely no payments for 60 days at New Home TV and Furniture. It's easy to own anything from the huge selection of furniture, TVs, appliances, camcorders, fine jewelry, and more. Remember, no money down. Credit is not a problem. No payments for 60 days. Take it home today. It's yours from New Home TV and Furniture. Buy now. How to spot the warning signals of an ugly breakup on the next Montel. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. When it's gotta be great and it's gotta be now, it's gotta be, gotta be Domino's. Welcome back, everyone. We'll hear from Rob Woodson in a moment, but first we get a second helping of Will McDonough's news and notes. Let's go back to Will in Atlanta. Will. Thanks very much, Greg. The, the league trading deadline is only nine days away, and people are wondering what's going to happen to tight end Keith Jackson, who is now the property of the Green Bay Packers, and Patrick Bates, who is the property of the Raiders. Uh, Keith Jackson has not played a game since the playoff game last year against San Diego. He had eight catches for over 100 yards, and his agent, Wishad, tells me he does not want to come back to football. He's going to retire off of that game, says he has plenty of money, and he's going to be happy. Of course, this leaves Green Bay stuck for a second-round draft choice, which they gave to Miami for the right to get Jackson. Bates, who lives in Dallas, is back there and would like to play for the Cowboys. However, my understanding is there's nothing being done in the way of a trade so far, and of course, like we said, the deadline is still nine days away. Speaking of Dallas, Deion Sanders came in there Wednesday on a cane, threw it away Thursday, has already started jogging, and the Cowboy folks say he'll be ready to play before the month is over. Back to you, Greg. All right, Will, thank you. Joe, if this is a negotiating ploy by Keith Jackson, time's running out on him, isn't it? If he wants to play again, my experience has been, Greg, that players that sit out. I had Tony Peters and John Riggins that were at the top of their game set out and it was very tough for them coming back. As far as getting out of football with enough money, the only guy I know that did that was Mike Dicka. Well, I guess Keith doesn't realize that it's not about the money, it's about the love. That's right, it's <laughs> not about money. The featured game of our doubleheader is San Diego at Pittsburgh. Unfortunately for the Steelers, they're playing without Rod Woodson, who tore a ligament in his knee back in week one and is out for at least the regular season. Ahmad Rashad spoke with Woodson. You know, they just, you know, swing pass out to Barry and and I came up to tackle him, and, it, and I felt my knee shift. It didn't hurt at all. I just felt it shift. I laid on the ground, and I, as I was laying on the ground, I was just saying, don't be my ACL. Don't be my ACL. Come on, get up. Just don't be my ACL. Stood up. I knew it was my ACL because my leg was shifting a little bit. Well, not only did you uh, look at the replay of the injury, you also, when you got the operation, you made sure that you were awake so you could watch them work on your knee. Well, you know, Dr. Stedman is a great doctor out in Vail, Colorado. Uh, but I wanted to make sure he knew what he was doing. Like, I knew what he was doing. But <laughs> I wanted to see, really. I didn't want to see. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we were talking the whole time. I was a little out of it, but uh, you know, we were talking. He was telling me what was uh, going on. He took my patella tendon out. I told him I wanted to see it, and he showed me my patella tendon before he put it back in. And uh, it was interesting. Now, you also told uh, Bill Cower that to leave you on the active roster because you thought you might be able to come back? Um, you know, everybody that you talk to is saying, you know, you'd be crazy trying to come back this year. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, their opinion. You know, I, I'm a person, I'm, I'm an optimist. I like to go against the odds anyway. Um, you know, they didn't think I would have the range of motion. I already have my range of motion. It's been two weeks. And, I, you know, I can touch, almost touch my heel on uh, my buttocks already. If I'm ahead of my program, I don't know. It's only been two weeks. When you do accelerated rehab, it's anywhere between four to six months. You can come back, depending on the person. And... Four months is right at the end of December, beginning of January, right in the playoff. Uh, if we, you know, depending on if you win the division or whatever, uh, if you can be the wild card or get a week off, it'd be great if we got a week off and I don't feel advantage. You know, that'd be even better for me. Wouldn't it be better to just take the year off, strengthen that leg up, and come back next year? It probably would. It probably would, but I'm hard headed. So I'm, I'm going to try it. And, uh, but if, you know, if I go out there and, and once I start running it, you know, in three months, and stuff of that nature, and it doesn't feel good, I wouldn't go out and play. I'm not that crazy. How tough is it watching every week? Uh, it's tough. Uh, you know, I'm at home the last two weeks and, you know, see the, seeing the guys play, and, uh, you know, especially the Monday night game, it's a big game, a national televised game, and, 
You know, and my wife made me a nice little snack. I couldn't even snack. I'm nervous, you know, and I'm I'm shaking. Like, I'm on the football field still, you know, got the adrenaline going and everything. I want to play, but I can't because I'm on the couch. So, you know, I'm one of the uh, money-eating quarterbacks nowadays sitting on the couch going, oh, come on, guys, why you do that? Rod Woodson, as valuable a guy as he is, Mike, wouldn't you want him to take the whole year off and make sure that he's strong for next season? You know, I, I got to say what he said. I guess I'm a little crazy, too. I'd want him back if I could get him back because right now the Steelers need him very badly. First of all, they can't play those blitz defenses without him on the corner. Uh, he, he's just a good football player, but the Steelers better get their offense on track. If they don't get the offense on track, they won't have any reason to bring him back. And Joe, you miss a Rod Woodson in a lot of places, don't you? A lot of different ways. You miss him in man coverage, as Mike points out, because it changes their whole style of defense. I think you also miss him in the locker room from a leadership standpoint. And then I think another very important point, and, and something this guy really adds to the team, is, is the return man and special teams you miss him there also. All right, gentlemen, no Rod Woodson, but the Steelers host the San Diego Chargers in the game most of you will see at 4 o'clock Eastern time. And our NFL on NBC halftime activities continue. Brotherly love, Joe becomes a model student. Then, on minor adjustments, meet the master hacker. I thought internet was what you sprayed on your hair before final net. Then, Paul and Jamie make the most important decision of their entire married life. It's a small step for a couple of Buckmans, but it's a huge leap for Buckman kind. And hope sending sexy email to everyone. Why does it say message sent to global list? All new Hope and Gloria, NBC tonight. Wavy TV 10 and Golden Corral want to send you to the hottest, most exciting UAW GM 500 NASCAR race ever on October 8th in Charlotte, North Carolina. All you have to do is go by any Golden Corral restaurant and register for your chance to win a pair of NASCAR tickets with hotel accommodations for one night. Three winners will be announced live on Wavy News 10 at 5.30 on Monday, October 2nd. Go by any Golden Corral and register for your chance to win. Brought to you by Golden Corral and Wavy TV 10. You're watching the station on your side. Wavy TV 10. Tuesday night, postseason baseball returns with a division series. The Reds battle the Dodgers. Plus, the Red Sox, the Braves, the Indians, the AL West winner, and the Wild Cards. Regional coverage at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific starts Tuesday night on NBC.